With reporting season almost upon us, it's timely just to run through our stocks and provide some update on, on our expectations. What we've seen over the last three, six and 12 months is the healthcare sector underperform the broader market. Uh, that's due to a couple of reasons. Uh, firstly, the move out is uh, from or into cyclicals from uh, so the more defensive, more expensive uh, sectors like healthcare. Also, since uh, President Trump uh, has been elected, there's been a lot of uncertainty in the pharmaceutical sector over in the US with uh, concerns around drug pricing and also what uh, might happen as uh, Obamacare is, is replaced and how that might play out. Uh, but essentially, the fundamentals of, of healthcare remain unchanged. So the ageing population, uh, increasing innovation, which uh, is driving greater adoption of technology, and also the fact that uh, much of healthcare is, is funded by the government provides some pretty strong tailwinds for the sector uh, over the longer term. But in terms of the short term, our outlook is uh, quite, uh, quite neutral at the moment. But we do recognise that healthcare represents around 6% of the ASX 200. Uh, so an appropriate weighting is, is necessary for clients' portfolio. And if we look internationally, uh, healthcare represents around about 13% of the, the major indices around the world. So in terms of uh, building clients' portfolios, our key core stocks uh, remain CSL, uh, ResMed and HealthScope. Uh, when we talk about healthcare, we try and uh, split them into subcategories or, or four buckets as we refer to them as, and that's the uh, medical devices, pharmaceuticals, diagnostics and services. So just quickly running through um, the top, um, the ASX top 200 healthcare stocks and our expectations for reporting season. If we start with the medical device uh, sector, we've got sitting there, uh, we have uh, ResMed, um, they reported a very solid um, set of numbers at their quarterly, so they've provided, so that gives us a good um, uh, lead into what, they're, what we're expecting there. So they've got a new product launch which has gone well. Uh, ResMed sits into our high conviction list and we're maintaining a positive stance on that stock with, the, uh, with that quarterly basically uh, providing a fair bit of uh, comfort around what they'll report in that first half. Secondly, Cochlear, uh, been a very strong performer uh, in the healthcare sector over the last six months. Trading on some fairly high multiples, uh, they've provided a fairly wide guidance range. Uh, so depending on where that falls, um, they'll need to probably come to the upper end of that to be able to maintain, or maintain that very high share price. So a little more cautious on Cochlear, um, preferring ResMed. Some of the smaller names, uh, that we look at in, the, in medical devices include Certex. They've had a, a number of issues around uh, both corporate governance and also their core business under pressure. So we're uh, maintaining a, a, a new, very neutral stance on that story. Uh, with Nanasonics, the uh, fourth uh, player in the medical device space, uh, we do like that story. Again, they've produced a couple of very strong quarters, so we're expecting that their first half result uh, will be in line with uh, what we've seen in those quarters. So, not expecting too much in terms of share price movement. Uh, the next uh, subsector we're looking at is pharmaceuticals, and CSL fits into that space. Again, CSL provided uh, an update to the market a couple of weeks ago, up updating or upgrading their uh, performance, and that came from um, much better um, sales coming through for their, their core plasma business. Uh, and that, uh, that saw the share price rally from around about $100 up to $113. So again, that result's been basically pre-released, so we're not expecting too much to uh, come out of the, the first half result. Uh, the next subcategory is diagnostics. That's where Sonic and uh, Primary Healthcare sit. Uh, Sonic, again, is, has been a consistent performer. They've made some very strategic acquisitions in, in uh, a number of geographies, particularly in Germany. Uh, so we're uh, expecting a solid result from them, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Primary healthcare, on the other hand, is very much going through a, a transition period until we can see some evidence of a clear strategy coming through. Uh, we prefer to sit out of that name. Uh, the fourth sector, and the one where most of uh, the companies sit, is the services sector. So we're starting with the hospital operators. Um, the, the key uh, or the largest player in that is, of course, Ramsey Healthcare. 
um, they've uh, provided some guidance to the market to suggest that um, they're tracking according to their um, uh, to their guidance. They have a history of uh, upgrading uh, at their results. So if, if history is any guide, we should see a, a reasonably positive result uh, from Ramsey. Although we are just noting that uh, volume numbers across uh, the GP visits, uh, diagnostics, um, radiology have been a little softer over the last couple of quarters. So um, we're just uh, a little bit cautious, but uh, certainly if history is any guide, Ramsey should do well. Um, also in our, one of our portfolios, we have HealthScope sitting. Uh, the HealthScope uh, had a profit downgrade a um, couple of months ago. So most of the bad news we think is in that share price that has subsequently recovered. So again, we're not expecting uh, too much bad news to come out of the, the half, half result from, from HealthScope. And certainly if you look at the growth profile over the next couple of years, that looks very encouraging. So maintaining a positive stance on HealthScope. Then moving to the aged care operators, uh, Regis and Japara. Again, both have provided uh, full year guidance, which we expect will be reconfirmed at the first half result. However, the, our uh, gut feel is that the first half will probably be a little softer for both those companies and they'll pick it up in the second half. The key for the aged care operators is how they will uh, offset the cuts which are planned in 2018 onwards. So uh, n sitting with whole recommendations on both those names and not expecting too much to come out of the reporting season for them. And then just finally is the um, the IVF players, so that's uh, Monash and Virtus. Uh, both companies have reported weak IVF domestic cycles, uh, so that's that's been factored into share prices. There's also been commentary around uh, the low cost operator coming into the market uh, through one of the divisions of primary healthcare has taken uh, some market share from both those players. So again, those share prices have been marked down. For this reporting season, we're not expecting uh, too much uh, movement in share price one way or the other. We think the, the current share price fairly reflects the current conditions in the IVF space. Uh, that's all for our update on the upcoming reporting season. We'll uh, provide updates uh, as those companies report uh, during February. Bye for now.